Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be trying to show something a bit different. Uh, I'm not going to really be, it's not necessarily going to be, be a how-to video here on what I'm going to do. But it's moreover just going to be me uh, showing what I'm going to do to this particular car. Um, I recently picked up a CSX box car in hopes of doing a particular graffiti tag. Um, and if you guys are following me on my Facebook page, Dan's Custom Trains, uh, you'll know which car I'm talking about. Um, if not, for any of the YouTube followers, this is the car I will be doing. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so this is CSXT 1412-70. And as you can see, it's SEN, and then you have the Storm Stripper. Uh, in the middle of the car, which is pretty badass, I think. And so this is probably one of the, the coolest graffiti tags I've seen on a CSX box car yet. And uh, I've, I really want to do this car. Okay, so first problem, okay? Notice the box car type here. All right, look familiar? Any guesses? That's right, this is an Athern, uh, the best culprit, this is the prototype that the a early Athern uh, box car represents. I think it's a. Uh, I don't think it's an ACF box car. I think it's a FMC or something like that. One of those. One of those companies made this particular car. Um, so, what's the problem here is that Athern does make this car. However, the tooling on the car has not been updated. The only cars you can find in CSX livery uh, are just horrible, in my opinion. They ride too high, as you guys know. Um, they lack a lot of detail and I'm, I'm just uh, at the point I just don't really want to do any more cars like that uh, and it really sucks but I just w I don't want to have to try to fix the thing up because it has so many problems uh, so in this case what I'm going to try to substitute for the tag or the base for the tag itself is an inner mountain CSX box car which is an entirely different prototype altogether you can see the car body is different the door is different pretty much everything on this car is different um, but you know, in this particular case, not too much really matters here because I'm going to pretty much be covering the entire side of this this car up with the graffiti. Um, so I don't think it really matters too much. I hate doing a car that's not exactly prototype. Uh, that was the lesson I learned with this the um, the Habak graffiti car, if you remember that, the uh, H-back car, or whatever it's called. I, I put that on the wrong kind of hopper just because the prototype wasn't made, and that sort of made it inaccurate. So. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to have to do it on this car. And what I'm going to do, um, I was going to copy the original car number, which is 141270, but again, since I'm using a different prototype, I'm just going to have to um, forget the number and just use the number that's on the car instead of changing it because it's already the car's already inaccurate in the first place. And the main attention we're giving to this car is the graffiti anyways. So um, what I'm going to have to do with this is this car, I know it's hard to see, has a purple backdrop. So what we'll have to do, I'm going to have to take my airbrush, paint the entire side of this car purple, and then I'm going to have to do the outlines for the S, the E, and then the N, and then I'm going to have to do all of these little cracks, all of the highlights, all of the shadow effects, as you can see. I'm going to have to do the YCS, and then I'll finish the E in the center of the door before I can actually do the uh, uh, Storm Stripper herself. Um, but I'm going to try to do that <laughs> on the, basically this car. So if I can make this work, this is going to be one hell of an epic model. That is for damn sure. I'm uh, pretty excited about it. So I'm not going to be able to show too much and describe in detail what I'm going to do because this is going to be pretty labor intensive but I'll be able to show some of the, the steps as I do them and maybe describe in a little detail and I think this should make for a relatively entertaining video so um, yeah that's pretty much the start of it so what I'm going to do first is go ahead and set this thing up and we'll start painting the purple backdrop for this car okay so uh, first off on this car what I got to do is paint the purple backdrop as I said and with this I haven't put any gloss, uh, dull coat or anything like that on the car yet. What I'm going to do is paint the purple on. Once that's applied, I'll put a gloss coat on the entire car. Uh, for the paint on this model, the car itself it was relatively new when it, when it got tagged. 
Uh, so I want the, the paint to still have a little bit of gloss to it, even though I'll still weather over it a little bit. Um, so that's what I'll try to aim for with this. Uh, but the gloss coat will come after, like I said, uh, I uh, put the purple on. And of course I'll put more gloss coat over the entire tag when it's finished. Um, but what I'm just using here, um, I've taken the trucks off the car too, by the way, and I haven't masked anything off because I want there to be just a little bit of overspray on everything because it's kind of prototypical anyways because generally when they do cars like that, you'll have the overspray on the corners and the roof. Um, I'm using the Anita's Craft Acrylic here, this stuff, uh, and I'm just using the straight purple out of the bottle, uh, diluted with some enamel, or not enamel, but a, a rubbing alcohol. And I found that this color looks uh, the most... Uh, or relatively close to what I see in the photo, so I'm just going to roll with this. So I got my airbrush hooked up, and I'm just going to go ahead and start spraying this. But you want to build this up in slow, gradual layers. You don't want to try to blast this all on at the same time. You don't want it to be very thick. With graffiti especially, you just want nice, thin, even coats at a time. And I just got a bunch of splat on the car, but that's alright. We'll take care of that later. But I'm just going to go ahead and start spraying this until I get the entire side of the car uh, covered up consistently enough. Now I got the base coat on, I can go ahead and start layering the color on. And you can see it almost immediately starts to transform the, the color of the car. But that'll be the first coat right there. So I just gloss coated this thing. Uh, it's all covered up, ready to go. And this will basically be the canvas for all the lettering work that I'll have to do, uh, painting it by hand. Uh, really tedious stuff, but... Basically, the first thing I need to do is create an outline for the white lettering. Um, I'm not too worried about the interior, or the uh, door rather, uh, in this middle section here because that's a pretty basic shape. It's just an E. Um, but what I need to get right is the S and then the N. Uh, so what I have is my Prismacolor pencil, which I have nice and sharpened up. And this is what I'm going to use to try to basically create an outline. And I'm just going to try to do this um, on the outer edge of the car and I'm just very lightly, excuse me, uh, going over this. I just want to create, like I said, the basic outline. I'm not looking for detail here, just ba the, the basic placement of the letters here. So, something like this. And again, this is really, really tedious work. And it's just one of those things you can't really rush. You just got to take your time with it. And now to do the end. Just kind of carefully line this up. I want to get this as close as I can here. And I'm just going back and forth looking at the photo. It's always good to have constant reference that you can look over. That's why I recommend if you look at the photo, have it up on your computer and just continually glance over just to basically check everything you're doing to make sure it's right. That way you don't start going at a certain point. Because some people are like that. Some people will start doing all this stuff without looking at a photo. They'll write the whole thing out, then compare it to the prototype, and then realize that the end's slightly off or that it's way too far over or something like that. And uh, it's just good to have that reference, you know, always in your face. That way you can see what you're doing the whole time. <clears throat> and that's how I always do it myself. Sorry, my finger's going to be in the way here for a moment. There's really not much to what I'm doing right now. You guys get the basic idea. It's just a matter of taking your time and tracing out the shape of the uh so with that out of the way, we basically have a rough outline of the S and the N. And what I'm going to try to do now is fill this in with my white acrylic. I'm using a larger brush here, uh, so something like this is what I'm using. A uh, relatively thin, medium brush with a nice, fine tip. 
and I'm just using my white acrylic. Uh, it's not diluted, um, but you can dilute this if you want to with some alcohol. That will make it uh, you know go on much smoother. Uh, that's totally your call there, however you choose to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and start applying this. Okay, so if I can uh, adjust this thing right, it's hard doing this when the camera's upside down. Um, but if you can see that, I've uh, pretty much filled in the S, and this took a couple coats to do. There's still a few little areas that I'm going to have to correct where you can see through, kind of with the purple bleeding through that I'll touch up later. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I'm going to just let that part of it dry, and in the meantime, just start working on filling in the N. Now, as I said before, I'm going to do the E after I get all of the shadow and basically the background effects that these two letters here have before I do that. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm just going to fill in the end now, and I'll go ahead and get started on that. So just like before, it's just patience. Patience is the key with this. It's just taking your time, making sure that you get all this right. So I'm just going to start one little section at a time, and just build this up in gradual coats until I get the whole thing covered nice and neatly. And uh, something like I want to mention here, you see how I'm holding the, the my hand here? I'm actually cradling, cradling this hand, my right hand, which I'm right-handed. I'm cradling my right hand and my left hand like this, and basically holding it and supporting it, essentially. And this is how I can have such a steady hand, as you'll see when we get to all the detail work that we'll have to do when we get to the Storm Stripper herself. Uh, you guys will see all the detail work and how this really helps, especially when using the fine tip brushes like these to do those fine detail effects to actually cradle or support your hand. It really helps, especially if you have shaky hands like I do. I have very bad uh, uh, shaky hands, uh, unfortunately, due to the fact that I've been playing. I'm a drummer, so I, pull, I hold the sticks. I, or I've rather held the sticks the wrong way uh, for several years, and that caused some nerve damage. So that's why I, I found this technique to work the best or like any kind of support on my hand like this to basically you know support it that way I'm not trying to hold it in midair because you can see I'm already shaking all over the place holding it like that so this is just one of those little tips I wanted to straight off and point out how I do this myself and you guys can too you guys can find however you want to hold a brush uh, in the best way you can to support it so that your hands not going all over the place but I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling this in again just like I did with the S Okay, so I got the uh, letters all filled in. You can see I just decided to paint the door completely white at this point. I'll just do all the detail work uh, for the shape of the E uh, while I'm doing the black effects or the shadow effects right now, which is the next step. And as you can see on the prototype, again, you can see these effects, and then they're outlined in a purple and a bit of a red color, too. I know it's pretty hard to see in this photo, but it's actually like that on the car. So that's what I'm going to try to create next. So starting with the uh, S again, I'm just working on uh, the outline for this. And this is where the detail starts to come in. So I'm going to do all the rounded corners and stuff like that. And again, like if there's any, uh, if any of the shapes of the letters themselves are off, this is now the time to correct them uh, with the black outline basically. So I'm just going to start working this in, and I'm using a fine brush here, again, uh, just in this particular step. And again, be very, very patient. Sorry, I keep popping the tripod, it's right by my arm here. Like I said, it's, it's very difficult for me to kind of work. I feel a little bit confined uh, with the tripod uh, directly basically against my arm and my leg here as I'm working, so it uh, adds a bit of a challenge to this. Uh, that's why I only show little bits and pieces at a time. Besides, you guys get the idea when I'm showing stuff like this. This is basically what I'm going to be doing for the all of this, basically. I'm going to be doing the black shadow effect, so you get the basic idea. I'll go ahead and cut this, and I'll come back when it's done.